Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, for today's EACTA ICU webinar, Can We Avoid ECMO in the Management of Postcardiotomy Shock? And my name is uh, Dr. Philippe Godard. I am uh, the head of uh, the cardiothoracic ICU department uh, at the Montpellier University Hospital in France. And uh, I am also the chair of the ICU uh, EACTA subspeciality committee. So I'm pleased to introduce the two moderators of that uh, webinar. First is Dr. Peter Russell from uh, Brussels, Belgium. He is an uh, EACTA ICU committee member. He is also a cardiac anesthesiologist and intensivist at the Flemish University Hospital of Brussels with a special assignment as a head of the transformation program of the cardiological care plane and clinical coordination of intensive care. He has a special interest in cardiac anesthesia, intensive care, patient blood management, TE, data registration and quality assessment and improvement, teamwork, anesthesia overseas, and so on. He is a past IACTA, a president of IACTA, and served as a, a representative council member and board member for 16 years. Uh, he was an affiliated member at the ACA from uh, 2014 to 2016. He is a member in the SCA and the ESICMA Dutch Association for Anesthesiology. Um, he has more than 50 publications and book chapters. The second moderator is uh, Dr. Daniela Passero. And she is uh, from uh, Turin, Italy, and she's working as a staff anesthesiologist of cardiac intensive care unit in the Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care Medicine at the Cita della Salute e della Scienza Hospital in Turin. Her main activities and responsibilities include organization of clinical activity of cardiac intensive care unit, infection monitoring role also. She has a clinical research activity on postoperative pulmonary complication and pulmonary hypertension in cardiac surgery, critically ill patients with sepsis and acute kidney injury, lab research on septic model and transitional research in septic patients and cell culture, organ procurement activity and protective ventilation in lung donors. She is a member of the ACTA Representative Council and the ICU and the VAD and Transplant Committees. So now, please, Peter, come to introduce the webinar and the objectives. The microphone is yours, Peter. Thank you very much, uh, Philip, for this uh, very nice introduction. I'm really excited for this uh, webinar which uh, <clears throat> I hope you will be very happy with the end. Um, uh, let me shortly introduce you to the objectives of this, this webinar, actually, uh, at the end of uh, which you should uh, understand the current evidence and, and the best practices, how to use uh, mechanical circulatory support after post-cardiotomy cardiogenic shock, as well as to avoid it. Um, so uh, we will, uh, oh, you will get a better understanding of the indications and contraindications as well as the different types uh, of uh, using ECMO and related devices in the treatment of post cardiogenic shock. Um, as well, you should understand how can we avoid and how we could use uh, balloon pump, anotropes and vasoporters in order to have the best treatment for these patients. Uh, we will address as well the use of uh, additional forms of uh, cardiac assist, temporary cardiac assist like ventricular assist devices, and as well um, you will have a, a better understanding of how TE should be used in order to help uh, the introduction as well as the proper functioning of this particular treatment. So I hope you were excited as I am about uh, what's coming up. Uh, just to make sure that you use this webinar appropriately, 
so we will address questions after each of the presentations. So please, if you have any questions, type them into your chat box and we will bring them up during the presentation and uh, we will uh, handle them and try to have some time for questions as well at the end. Having said this, it's my pleasure to introduce the last speaker of this webinar, who happens to be as well the chair of this webinar. He's as well the chair of the Intensive Care Subspecialty Committee of EACTA. Uh, in daily work life, he is the head of the Department of Intensive Care Medicine in Montpellier in France, and he has a vast experience with the use of ECMO and assist devices uh, in, uh, in Montpellier. Uh, and as such, he will um, give us his uh, lecture upon lessons taken from intensive care patients with post-cardiac cardiogenic shock. Philippe, the, floor, the webinar floor is yours. Okay, so after this very excellent lecture, I would like to take five minutes to talk about uh, lessons from uh, the ICU. Uh, this is my disclosure here, and I would like to start uh, with a kind of conclusion. Uh, the main question is how to deal with post cardiotomy cardiac shock. Uh, in one hand, we have uh, medical treatment and association or not with the interaortic bladder pump, and on the other hand, we have some devices for mechanical secondary support. And for each treatment, we have some expectation and limitations. For the medical treatment, for example, the expectation, expectation sorry, uh, are to avoid the low cardiac output syndrome, to avoid the use of mechanical circulatory support, and to get over from a short hemodynamic challenge. The limitations are numerous and uh, we have to deal with life-threatening condition with a refractory shock and of course there is a quick progression of organ failure in this uh, setting of post cardiotomy also we have to face uh, some side effects of uh, inotropes and catecholamines on the other hand, for the mechanical circulatory support and the VECMO, the expectations are to give a full circulatory support and oxygenation support. The good tool to avoid organ failure development and also to unload the right ventricle. But there is some limitation with uh, VECMO is to the urge overload of left ventricle and uh, the risk of uh, thrombosis of uh, cardiac chambers and the aortic valve. There is also an increased risk of uh, surgical bleeding. With the impeller, uh, the expectations are a very good uh, left ventricular support and also to avoid organ failure. Uh, this is a, a good tool to unload the left ventricle, but the limitation are, of course, the development of right ventricular failure and also the high cost of the device. So maybe we have to deal with a kind of combination of all these uh, strategies. And when we see what happened during the last 10 years with VA ECMO uh, for post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock, uh, the mortality is still very important. We have only 35% uh, of survival with this uh, support. Maybe it's possible there is a room to do better in this situation. One way may be a uh, combination of therapies. Uh, there is this uh, review in the GCVA journal, and uh, one, of, one kind of strategy to uh, unload the left ventricle may be the combination with an impella device. Another strategy is to combine medical treatment and uh, mechanical circulatory support 
and Levo Simandon have a, a good place in this uh, in this uh, goal because uh, there is some good data to support the use of Levo Simandon during the ECMO for early recovery and early winning from uh, the ECMO. Here, there is a presentation of some devices to support the right side of the earth. Uh, we have uh, now the Impera ERP, which is a percutaneous device to support uh, very well the, the left ventricle. We can use um, extracorporeal circulatory support to uh, uh, support the right ventricle with uh, right to right cannulation. Uh, centrally cannulation or also percutaneous cannulation with this uh, new cannula, the protect duo cannula is a very big one but uh, very interesting to support the, the right ventricle. On the left side we have the impella for example, a very, um, there is three sizes of impella but the impella 5.0 is a um, most important one, and I, I think uh, the one to use during postcardiotomy uh, cardiogenic shock. And for global support, we have, uh, of course, the VECMO with peripheral cannulation or central cannulation. And when we need to have a longer support, we can move to a centrimag of or when we need to uh, have a lower anticoagulation, maybe it's better with uh, centrimac devices. So to conclude, I would like to say, uh, of course, it's very important to avoid uh, ECMO and circulatory support, but uh, don't come too late. Don't come too late uh, in the in the battle, and. Uh, if we have um, a delay to support the patient and uh, we have to face an increase of mortality of course and there is a lot of theory to uh, a lot of uh, case reports and a retrospective uh, study to support this so don't come late uh, to the party and uh, Thank you for the attention. Um, I hope that with this webinar, we've been able to provide you with a good overview uh, how ECMO can be used and should be used, which are the, the, the caveats, and as well that uh, ECMO should be seen within a whole arsenal uh, of, of therapies. And, uh, I think that basically Dr. Antonio Rubino from uh, from uh, Papua, uh, the UK, he explained very clearly the basics of uh, ECMO treatment. Um, he addressed as well the, the risks and, uh, and and the complications which are involved, which are really really vast. And actually, uh, he was mentioning like other lectures that the outcome after postcardiac cardiogenic shock in patients who need the ECMO is uh, not very good and in the best centers it approaches uh, somewhat about one third of the patients who recover from ECMO. However, this is very dependent as he mentioned upon a very good selection. He insisted on the fact that such selection should be a multidisciplinary decision and I think uh, his final words was actually that, that every patient is different, ECMO is complex and uh, for every case, we need a tailored approach in order to have the most benefit and avoid uh, the side effects. Next was uh, Dr. Isabel Michaud from, from Brussels, Belgium, who gave us an overview of uh, post cardiotomy cardiogenic shock. She um, mentioned um, the heterogenic uh, literature, which is uh, very difficult uh, to interpret and to provide evidence what's the best treatment in this uh, situation. She reviewed uh, the use of balloon pump, which should not be dismissed lightly and is probably very valuable, uh, particularly in the preoperative, session, uh, the preoperative setting in these uh, high-risk patients. Um, 
as well as in uh, combination with ECMO in order to provide after load reduction, which may be a major problem with uh, with ECMO. She reviewed as well uh, some some of the anatropics. Uh, she pointed out to the risk of very high doses of epinephrine. Uh, she mentioned the, the let's say somewhat um, care we should uh, have with the use of milrinone. Um, she uh, reviewed as well levisimendan, which was very promising, but still waits to find its niche where it is most useful. Again, here preoperative setting. It's probably the best, the best uh, <clears throat> way to use it. Next was Dr. Watara from Paris, who uh, explained that next to ECMO, we may uh, use other treatments, other assist treatments like uh, ventricular assist device, be it uh, left ventricle, right ventricle, or bi biventricle. And this should be seen more as, let's say, a second approach after the ECMO in order to, to bridge uh, to, to something else, uh, maybe an assist device for uh, when you're lucky in heart transplant. Um, he reviewed as well the, the Impella device, which is very promising, particularly we know the high flow uh, variants, uh, as well the, the, the Impella, which you can insert surgically uh, from within the apex or to sternotomy. Uh, as well as the new uh, upcoming uh, Impella for right ventricular assist. All very promising, but still uh, very early, early phase studies. <clears throat> um, Dr. Priya Menon from uh, Leipzig gave us a, a good review how the guidance should be used in the insertion of ECMO cannulae, uh, balloon pump, as well as uh, Impella. Uh, not only insertion, but as well in the daily follow-up of this patient, TOE guidance is of paramount importance. Uh, finally, Dr. Philip Godard, he gave us the viewpoint from uh, the intensive care to these patients. And with that, I think, uh, I hope we have given you a good overview, which will allow you to uh, make better use of ECMO in, in your patients. I really hope that uh, you enjoyed this, this webinar. Uh, I wish you a very good evening. Thank you for your participation from wherever you are listening or looking. And uh, now I'm giving the final words uh, from this webinar to uh, Dr. Dr. Godar. Dr. Godard, the webinar is yours. Thank you, Peter, for this point-by-point uh, -point wrapping up. Now, I think uh, we are good for now. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it was a pleasure being with you today. As a take message, I would like to say that uh, VA ECMO for refractory post-cardiotomy cardiogenic shock needs to be started early when inotropes don't work and needs to be customized to patient and surgical situation, including a combination with intraortic balloon pump. Less ventricular unloading is mandatory and minimal pulmonary flow needs to be preserved as much as possible. Anticipation of prevention is a key point for the use of balloon pump and probably levosimandan in selected cases. Selective left ventricular support or combined ventricular assist devices are promising options. TEE is absolutely essential for the indication, the setting up, the follow-up and the winning of mechanical secondary support. It's time now to close the session. On behalf of uh, all speakers and moderators, I would like to highlight and emphasize the value of Professor Mohamed El Tahan as uh, Educom Chair being instrumental in organizing this IACTA webinar. This is my pleasure to introduce Professor Fabio Garaccino, the president of IACTA, to conclude and close the webinar.
please, Fabio. Uh, good evening, everybody, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, due to unpredictable technical uh, problems, I am not able to uh, lively connect with you at the end of this webinar, but I really, really wanted to thank all the, peoples, the people who made this webinar uh, happen. Uh, so, it is a pleasure for me, on behalf of the ACTA Board of Directors, to thank the speakers who did an excellent job and we are very grateful to them for their commitment to ACTA. We know how hard it was to prepare the lectures, to go through the rehearsals with Professor Eltaan in order to make everything uh, work fine tonight. So, many, many thanks to all the excellent speakers. Uh, a special thank to the ICU subcommittee. Uh, all these educational activities are prompted by our subcommittees, are supported by the subcommittees, and we are very, very uh, grateful to our colleagues and friends in the subcommittees for supporting these uh, educational activities. Um, I really wish to thank, to thank a lot, the sponsors who supported us and allowed us to uh, make this webinar uh, possible. Um, so I really thank Abiomed and Orion Pharma for their uh, support. Uh, we are really grateful they are supporting not only this webinar, but in general, our educational activities and scientific activities. And so we consider them really part of this team producing education and scientific uh, um, activities for our community. Um, let me thank the team from Rome, uh, the team from AIM, our association management team, they did an excellent job in supporting and backing all this activity. And last but not least, as we used to say, a great, great thank to the Educational Committee of IACTA and to, the, to, his, to its chair, Professor Mohamed El Taan, who is so active and is supporting, promoting and managing all these uh, interesting educational activity. Many, many thanks. Um, well, we apologize for not addressing all the answers. This is due to the limit of time. But the ACTA will publish all the answers uh, by speakers on the website. So before saying goodbye, I really wish to remind all of you that the ACTA, the next, sorry, the next ACTA webinar will be in March 2020. So keep on following us. Thank you so much for attending and joining. Bye bye.